you don't know the signs, you can't save your kids. On the uh, night of March 1st, 2005, I left for work about 11.30. My wife went in and kissed our son Kyle goodnight. That morning she got up, went to wake Kyle up for school. She went in and shook him and he fell over. Kyle was dead. I knew all the other signs. I just didn't know about inhaling abuse. I'm a cop, my wife's a nurse. We knew what to look for when it came to our children using drugs and alcohol, but we had no idea about inhaling abuse. No parent should have to find out about inhalants like we did. Homeownership is the American dream, but folks from a group of Evansville churches say it's not an option for too many of the working poor. Now they're pleading the city to help. Plus, four house fires in less than a month. Any connection? Investigations are underway. And inhalants, a quick high but a deadly one, and too many teens are experimenting. That's seven things you should know. This is Fox 7 News at 9. The most local news, the most local coverage. More affordable housing. This event was part of a week-long impaired driving awareness week. More and more kids are using inhalants to get high. From 2002 to 2004, more than 500,000 12 to 17-year-olds in the U.S. reported that they had abused inhalants at least once. In the first part of our series, Seven Things You Should Know, Fox 7's Kelly Carlisle takes a look at a dangerous game among teens called huffing. In this video on YouTube.com, a teenager sniffs a fume-filled bag. A short while later, he passes out. Huffing or bagging, as it's known, is nothing new, but still relatively unknown. When I was uh, a child, you know, to watch out for paint, glue, and such. And I think there's just some other things that are being used now that we were not aware of that have been abused for quite some time. Warren Marr travels to schools, churches, and businesses, educating parents and kids about the dangers of inhaling chemicals. I think it's everyone's responsibility. As parents, we need to know. We need to be informed. We need to warn our children that uh, this is very dangerous. Dangerous because what these kids are using to get high are everyday household items. In fact, there are roughly 1,400 potentially abusable products on the market today. Magic markets could be uh, abused. Uh, nail polish. While we're standing here, there's some of the aerosols that can be abused uh, because of the propellant that's in it. The white out, the chemical in here that causes it to dry is what some of the kids have been uh, using this for to abuse. The number of deaths caused by inhalants is currently unknown, partly because these types of deaths are listed as accidental on death certificates. But we've all seen the tragic stories. One thing you should know about inhalants is that it can kill you the first time you try it police officer going around the country. He uh, works with drugs, I believe. His wife is a nurse. They lost their son to the computer duster. They just weren't aware of the signs. Most of these products do have a warning label. This one says inhaling can be harmful or fatal. It even lists a website to help stop inhaling abuse. However, when was the last time any of us stopped to read the fine print? Read the labels. Symptoms of inhaling abuse include paint or stains on clothing, hands, and face, presence of chemical-soaked rags, a dazed or dizzy appearance, red or runny eyes and nose, also a chemical odor on the breath. 
You can't keep your kids away from items like hairspray, markers, air fresheners, and nail polish remover, but you can educate them on the dangers of abusing these products. Kelly Carlisle, Fox 7 News. And you can visit our website at tristatehomepage.com for a link to more information about the prevention of huffing. Gas prices throughout This is 14 News at 6. Summer vacation is almost here, and it's a good time for parents to take an inventory of what their kids should not be fooling around with. Common household items can be abused as inhalants for youngsters to get high. Shannon Sampson's here with our 14 Health Report. Well, it's huffing, and it's just like taking poison. Not many people know that. The numbers are surprising. A national survey shows more than 1 million kids and teens have tried inhalants last year, and 23 million people have tried huffing at some point in their lifetime. It's a short-lived high that can have lasting effects, as serious as memory loss, brain damage, and even death. People know about pain. The, uh, for people that abuse it, the metallic ones seem to be the better, but it says right here on this brand here, vapor harmful. Inhalant hazards aren't exclusive to the pain aisle. The regional director of the community crusade against drugs is at Ace Hardware to show parents what else their kids could be sniffing. Rubber cement can be abused. Um, people have died because of cooking spray. Take, for instance, nail polish remover. Mars suggests moms buy the non-acetone kind. Here is acetone. This is what they're talking about. That's in there. That's the product that's strong and clean. And people e might even get this and again inhale the vapors. Markers have long been a preferred inhalant, but manufacturers got wise and started making ones with low odor ink. Same goes for computer dusters. This company has been proactive. Not only have they put warnings in their product, they've also added stuff to the uh, chemical itself to deter anyone from huffing it. But parents can't rely on companies to do all the work. Mars' advice is to read the label of every product you buy. If it gives you a warning about vapors and tells you to use it in a ventilated area, that it has the potential to be misused. Know what you have. Don't take it for granted. If you notice your uh, products, whether it's a cleaning product or whatever, is disappearing fast, if it's a, a can that should be spraying and it's not spraying, you may not have a defective product or what have you. There, there's a chance of someone abusing it. Signs to look for if you think your child might be huffing. Red, runny eyes or nose, spots or sores around the mouth, nausea or lack of appetite. A lot of times you can smell chemicals on their breath too or stains on the clothes is another thing to look for. They can sniff it. Oh, now could you die the first time you huff? Yeah, they call it sudden, in, or sudden inhalant death syndrome, just like SIDS. So it is possible and it does happen. Deadly. No, I, when I was a kid, I was worried about people sniffing glue. Is that still a problem? Glue's another one. Glade uh, aerosol freshener is the big one now. The kids call it glading. So hmm. glue's kind of old school. <laughs> oh, <I laughs> they can get their hands on a lot of other stuff now. That's yeah, still it's very serious. Powerful too. All right, thanks, Shannon. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. Well, more scattered showers to show you, but will the Mother's Day weekend be a wild?
after huffing butane. Is this a teenage trend? Good evening, I'm Ann Comis. I'm David James. A young life cut short, and authorities are warning other teens about the dangers of huffing. A Boonville High School senior laid to rest today at Garrison Cemetery in Warwick County. The sheriff says 17-year-old Carissa Crone died after voluntarily inhaling lighter fluid with friends at her home. It happened last Thursday while her parents were sleeping. Shannon Sampson's here with her story. Good evening, Ann. A good friend says Carissa Crone was amazing. She was a friendly, loving person who was always giving hugs to her classmates at Boonville High. Now they can't believe they'll be starting their senior year without her. Fine young lady, a very nice young gal that never been in trouble, never been a problem for the parents or anybody. That's why everyone who knew 17-year-old Carissa Crone was shocked by what happened on Thursday, just before midnight. First responders answered a 911 call to find the teenager unconscious at her home north of Tennyson. There were other teenagers at the scene as well, and the initial investigation uh, revealed that the victim, in this case, had been uh, ingesting butane, a uh, substance commonly used to refill cigarette lighters. Uh, this is something I wasn't familiar with for is the, the potential for abuse. It's the first time he's aware of it, but it's not the first time that things like this have happened. Warren Marr is the local so spokesperson right here, for a national right effort here. called the Community Very Crusade harmful. Against Drugs. Yeah. He shows parents everyday household products that are potential inhalants, paints, markers, computer duster, this and ways to tell if they're being misused. If it feels full but it won't spray, it may not be a defective product. Someone may have huffed, you know, or, what, or, or inhaled it. Or if you notice you're going through chemicals, whether it's a liquid or spray or whatever, they seem to be disappearing faster than what might make some common sense of use, then that may be a sign maybe you need to look further. According to a friend, the first time Carissa tried huffing butane on Monday, she only inhaled once. On Thursday, she tried it again, but this time inhaled three times. She passed out and later died at the hospital. The coroner says the cause of death was suffocation. This one death is whether it's one or a billion, it's one too many. Sheriff Hyman says his D.A.R.E. officer will likely focus more on inhalant abuse during the next school year. No charges will be filed against any of the teenagers who admitted to being with Crone before she died since butane is not an illegal substance. Shannon Sampson, 14 News. Teen sniffing inhalants is nothing new. But a death in one community is prompting one parent to speak out. 17-year-old Boonville High School student Carissa Crone was buried today after she allegedly inhaled butane. But a Warwick County mother says her child could have died doing the same thing just months ago. Fox 7's Latanya Stevens has the story of this mom alerting parents to the danger. To see your 16-year-old kid, you know, brought into the police station in handcuffs is just about, you know, one of the hardest things, you know, a parent can can visualize. This Warwick County mother says she wasn't aware her son had a problem. He had been um, snorting or inhaling or whatever you do with this product, um, dust off. Until police stopped him on May 3rd. It was just a half a block from the house when they pulled him over and one of the cans, there was, I think, five or six cans of this stuff in his car, and one of the cans were freezing cold. Still cold because he was apparently inhaling it while driving. He was dazed and his car was weaving, and though this mother doesn't want to be seen because he's still a juvenile, she does want to warn parents about the dangers of teens dusting, huffing, and sniffing inhalants to get high, something the parents of 17-year-old Boonville High School student Carissa Crone learned the hard way after she died inhaling butane last Friday. I was like, oh my God, that could have been my kid. According to this mother, her son purchased the cans of dust off here at this local Walmart. But this isn't the only place you can find inhalants like that. As a matter of fact, they can be found all over this community. In fact, you can find inhalants like butane, spray paint, and whipped cream at any hardware grocery or convenience store in any community, something Chandler police who arrested the 16-year-old are addressing head on. Chief Whiteside advised me today that he has, uh, he's gone to uh, the convenience stores here um, and advised them of uh, the problem uh, of kids coming in and buying this and basically trying to educate them on what to look for. 
Both incidents happened in Warwick County and both involve high school students. This concerned parent knows you can't hold stores totally responsible, so she's trying to seek counseling for her son while warning other parents that this is a bigger problem than they think. I mean, we need to get this story out there uh, and let parents know before something like that does happen. And it just, you know, wasn't quite fast enough for her, but hopefully parents will start searching cars and rooms and look for these products. LaTanya Stevens, Fox 7 News. The 16-year-old is still facing charges of driving while intoxicated and reckless driving, even though urine and blood tests did not show anything in his system. A follow-up to a story we told you about earlier this week. Authorities are warning teens about the dangers of huffing after a Boonville High School student died as a result of the deadly practice. 17-year-old Carissa Crone was laid to rest Tuesday at Garrison Cemetery in Warwick County. The sheriff says Crone died after voluntarily inhaling lighter fluid with friends at her home. Uh, all indications is it's a fine young lady, a very nice young gal that never been in trouble, never been a problem for the parents or anybody. Uh, but just, again, the willingness to experiment and try this type of thing is, is hard to understand and imagine. Sheriff Heilman says his D.A.R.E. officer will likely focus more on inhalant abuse during the next school year. No charges will be filed against any of the other teenagers who admitted to being with Crone before she died since butane is not an illegal substance. And Evan this could take his life. He didn't know the consequences. On June 20th, 1996, my husband, Ricky, he came home to work from work to find his best friend, our precious only son, dead in his own bedroom. Our son, Ricky, had huffed or inhaled Freon from our home air conditioning unit, and he died instantly from what is known as sudden sniffing death syndrome. We never, ever, not one single time, warned Ricky about inhalants. We didn't know to warn him. This is ABC 3340 News. Your news and information leader. A killer could be working in your kitchen cabinet. Furniture polish, oven cleaners, spray it's paint. It's one of the cheapest nails. and most dangerous ways for children to get high. It's called huffing or boosting. The common term for inhaling seemingly harmless household products to get a cheap high. Kids just don't realize that there's a risk associated with products in your garage. And if you talk to them, they're not too hard to pick out because they've lost their personality, they've lost a lot of their IQ, and these are permanent changes. Data showed us very clearly kids didn't understand the real dangers of sniffing these products to get high. If you start using them, there's a very good chance that you're going to get hooked. National statistics prove that it's not just a problem with inner city children or low-income children. Huffing is everywhere, and the problem is growing. 
The Alliance for Consumer Education says about one in five students has abused a common household product to get high. One in five kids have used inhalants by the time that they're in the eighth grade. 1,400 household and commercial products are used for getting high, including felt-tip markers, gasoline, air fresheners, and pressurized whipped cream canisters. Nail polish removers, hairspray, spray paint, glue, butane lighters, cooking sprays. The numbers keep growing. There's something very, very dangerous about inhalants, and that is called sudden sniffing death syndrome. And that can kill a child the first time that they actually try this. People who have been sniffing or huffing these things for years have less brain tissue than they used to have. They're accessible, they're cheap, and they're legal. They're household products. They're in our own home. They're in your kitchen. They're under your cabinet. Even more alarming, fewer children surveyed by the Partnership for a Drug-Free America associate any of these inhalants with serious health risk. A lot of these, particularly the volatile solvents, are capable of literally destroying your brain cells. Members of the Fort Worth Gang Task Force say young people are now using car and engine cleaning products, commonly found in convenience stores. So you just pass the soda can around or the bottle around inside the car or with your friends when you're walking down the street or something, it just looks like kids sharing a drink. When in actuality what they're doing is they're getting high. This has danger at the trial stage and at the early experimentation stage. Virtually all of these things that are used in inhalants are addictive. The problem is so bad, Texas is chosen for a pilot program aimed at educating kids in elementary school and their parents about the dangers of inhalants. Pennsylvania is one of six states participating in an anti-huffing program aimed at getting the message to kids before their teen years. A new prevention program designed by teens to warn parents about the products, the problems, and the signs of inhalant abuse. Counselors will work with parents of elementary and middle school age children to teach them about the risks of huffing so they can add inhalant abuse to their discussions with their children about drugs and alcohol. We're excited about what the Alliance for Consumer Education is doing in this effort. We're glad to see the inhalant abuse prevention kit. This kit contains everything that a school counselor or community leader needs in order to talk to parents or caregivers about the risks associated with inhalant abuse, the symptoms, and the interventions possible. We did not know about inhalants. We were totally in the dark about inhalants and inhalant abuse and the dangers and the warning signs. Every new generation of kids needs to be educated about this all over again. You don't want to learn about inhalants the way we did. Talk to your kids about the dangers we know that data shows that if parents talk to their children, it makes a difference. Talk openly with your children. Know the warning signs. The risks of inaction on any of our part are far too great.